guys. You're in for a really big treat. He's a star. Well, we love him. Give it up for Mr. Steve Ballow. Steve Back from the dead for sure. Here, let's give us let's take a moment. Let's hear a hand for everyone that went already because he's getting a chilly reception. No, but it's tough to get up here. I mean, it's tough to even just get to the fucking show. Like, today, I decided to drive like a fucking moron. Drive to Manhattan at fucking 5 o'clock. I, I had so much work to do, and I'm just like, okay, we gotta get there. And I swear to God, everyone on the Bruckner today had more, like, less brain power than Hugh has going on right now. But then, you know, and I'm tense the whole way. I'm like, what am I going to say? What am I going to get up there and do? And I said, okay, I'm going to get there. I get down 2nd Avenue. I'm rolling down. God, thank God I got a spot. And I pull in, and I pull out my phone to pay with the fucking app. The New York City app part. All the time I have the app. The app's like, well, it's in the cloud now. We're going to free up some space from you in the cloud. It's like, why don't you, why doesn't the phone fucking ask you, like, how long would you like to stay with this logged into this app and stayed on your phone? Because I'd say 10,000 fucking years. Because I'm, you know what? I'm going to be parking and I'm always going to be in a bad fucking mood when I got to pay this thing. So keep it on the fucking phone. But it's summer. Thank God it's summer. That's, you know, it's great because, like, everything slows down. Like, even if you work during the summer, it's, like, easier. It's like all the things that were like, get it to me by the end of the day become, oh, when you get a chance. And then you see people's like, have a good weekend just start to creep up. Like, you, should, you know, during the tough times when you're working, it's like, you know, you have to throw in uh, have a good weekend like 4.30 on Friday. But then it just starts creeping up. The other day, my buddy's like, have a good weekend. I was like, bro, it's 10 o'clock on Tuesday. What are you talking about? <laughs> No, but what's cool, has anybody been watching soccer lately? I love yeah. watching soccer. Oh, when, it's, when it's the countries, because you can get totally invested in the country you have no business room for. <laughs> the other day, I'm at my friend's house. I'm like, you like that, eh? Because I'm rooting for Canada as an American, and he's an Ecuadorian rooting for Argentina because they had some Italian guy. And that's how the whole shit works. But... Oh, and, the other, and, and Juneteenth is the new holiday. It's the best holiday. I wish someone would have told me that the office was closed, though. Like, it's just like slowly arriving information. But the summer kicks off on Memorial Day. And let me, let me put you in my shoes on Memorial Day. So we're hanging out. Me and my wife, it's like 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. I, I did all my have a good weekends. I'm all set to go. We're getting ready. Barbecue, baseball games, going to the beach. 6.30, my wife gets the call, her mother passed away. Oh. And it gets so much worse from there. So, instead of all those fun things, now we'll be flying to Thailand tomorrow. Oh. She's from Thailand. And so, like, usually when, when I'm going to Thailand, I have, like, a few months to, like, mentally get into that headspace to be on a plane for 24 hours, because it takes forever to get there. So now I'm like, you know, like, just trying to get into that headspace because there's nothing worse. I mean, I'm, I don't see a lot of fat men in here, big fat men, but like, there's nothing worse than when you're a fat man on an airplane and you have that realization that that other man who may be, God forbid, bigger than you or the same size as you is that he's coming to sit next to you for that 14 hour flight. It's just combined dread. But thank God, one good thing my mother-in-law did for me up in heaven was give me two Chinese grandmas to sit next to on the road. <laughs> so thank God for those amas, which is Chinese for grandma. Which is really weird because we called my Italian grandma ama, so there must have been some Nona over in, in China. And that's the grandmother cultural exchange note. <laughs> So, so okay, so we get there, I'm, I'm okay, I'm fresh, I'm ready to be the ultra supportive husband, you know, give me any of the food, I don't care if I get diarrhea, I'm just here, support, this is my moment. And so we get there, first thing we gotta do is pick up her mom from the hospital to bring to the funeral home, so I'm like, okay. So we get in there, we're in the back of the ambulance, me, my wife, the EMT, her mother, corpse, and so we're in the back of this ambulance. And uh, let me tell you about the weather in Thailand. It makes today, today would be like a mild day in Thailand. And it's so fucking hot. It was the end of the hot season, so it had cooled down to like 105 with a real feel of 130. So we're in the back of this ambulance, and it's hot. It's so fucking hot. I'm, I'm like, oh my god. 
And we have to do like, we have to guide her spirit to the funeral home. Like, Mom, come here, we're making a trip. And I'm rolling with it, I'm rolling with the punches, I'm there, I'm the supportive husband. Then the ambulance starts to go up a very steep hill, and the thing fucking breaks down. Oh. And that's when I had to like mentally like go to the next level. I had to like <laughs> dig deep. Like this is going to be one of those life altering experiences, like a DUI going to the Marine Corps boot camp. So we're in the back of the car, and I'm just like, okay, I get it. I'm here. I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm reaching for the stars. I'm trying to get every bit of energy to be the best husband I can. And, and then we get to the funeral. And Thai funerals, despite the fact that it's a thousand degrees, the funeral home is outside. So we're outside for four days with prayer services, nine hours, sitting there. And we all have to wear black. And there's nothing better than wearing all black, normal clothes in the direct 110 degrees. So. But I'm rolling with it. I'm going with it. After the second day, I feel like I can do this. I can be the best husband. And then her country cousins come in. And so now there's 20 people staying at this two-bedroom townhouse in Bangkok. On air conditioned. Oh. So I, I'm so, and it's like everything is going wrong. Like in Thailand, they use like the kitchen sink sprayer instead of toilet paper, so the toilet paper is there is only for me to use, the Westerner. And and somebody gets it soaked, so now I don't even have fucking toilet paper. It's just like it's just like oh no, I'm just, you know, cause I love my wife so goddamn much that I'm just I'm just gonna do it. I don't care if if my heart explodes. I'm just gonna be there for her this whole time. Cause you know, there's an end date on it. Like Sunday. I, I have to be, we have a, a final day of the funeral, and by the way, I have to do all the son things, because she has no son, she just has my wife, so I'm leading the funeral parade, holding the picture of her, <laughs> and that's my son, and I'm there, and I'm being the, I'm being the best, everyone's like, wow, that's just right on top of everything, he's, he's being a husband right there, put me in the husband hall of fame for this one. <laughs> I have to lead the parade up to the crematorium. And I hate saying crematorium because every time I think of the Holocaust, I can't, I can't help it. But then, you know, it all ends, we scatter the ashes, and because I'm not trying to use all my vacation days for this, I'm like, okay, I'll take a Sunday night flight and I'll go right to the 9 a.m. staff meeting at work. So now I'm in Hong Kong. It's 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm about to board a 14-hour flight. And the weird, fucked up thing about that flight from HK to JFK is that it starts at night, the sun comes up, the sun goes down, and the sun comes up again, and then you land. And I thought, oh, I'll just go right to the office. And you didn't realize, I thought I was gonna get all kinds of kudos and attaboys, and they were all I got was, you stink, don't come in here when you smell that bad, you're not really worth it. So it's not worth it. But, you know, the reason I haven't been doing comedy other than all that tragedy is that I actually got a job, a job offer to have another job teaching. So I had to make the choice between getting paid $75 an hour to like just blab about something I know tons about or spend $14 and then have no one laugh. So you can guess what I did. So thanks everyone, just you know, we're back. Do you ever see the other scene who popped the baby? No more. I haven't seen oh, him yeah. I saw him since. No, remember he was here? He was here. Yeah, he was about to pop. I talked to him. What you guys don't know is that Steve Ballard came into the room with a gentleman named Steven Siegel. <laughs> Steven Siegel, since the pandemic, has been married, had a kid, and has a whole life. Steven Ballo has been married and had just got back from China from his mother's uh, mother-in-law's <laughs> funeral. Yeah. Things are happening here, and they're happening all 